So I grew up the youngest of five, and I was the baby of the family. And I always wanted to follow in the footsteps of my two older cousins, Gethin and Jazz. And they were always going off doing all the, I guess you could call it hood rat things. I mean, we grew up in the suburbs. And back then, the suburbs was a bunch of houses next to a bunch of farmland and orchards. So the hood rat thing to do would be go out into the orchards, make a little makeshift tree house, stay there for about a couple hours, and then take it down and go back home. <laughs> So I always wanted to go trespassing with them. But uh, they never really wanted me around, so they'd be like, get the fuck out of here. Uh, going into high school, I tried to find myself and make that name for myself. Like, no, I'm not. They'd always call me Bachata. Oh, Bachata, poor baby, baby, Bachata. And I'd be like, no, I'm not a Bachata. I'm, I'm, I'm badass. I'm a bad hombre. So when I got to high school, I tried to establish that for myself, and I tried to find my little niche. I hung out with uh, the baseball guys. I didn't really work out that well, because when I was in Little League, I, I could run really fast, but like hitting and fielding, it wasn't that great. So they didn't really accept me that much. And then basketball wasn't a thing either, because the ball would come, and I, my hands would just be so sweaty. It would slip and just smack me right in the face. Uh, and theater was kind of a, a thing. I, I, I got in there a little bit, but later on, towards the end of my high school career. But what I was very thankful for in my homeroom class was, I was sitting there, and my homeroom teacher was just like, Jason, what are you, uh, what are you just sitting around here? It's free period. Don't you have anything to do? He's just like, no, not really. He's like, well, uh, why don't you go over to the student union, see if you can get a job over there. And they have like this little office area, I guess you could call it, where the vice principal would hang out, and there's a pool room, and there's a TV, and kids would be hanging out there watching the game show network. And the regular shows that would come up were uh, the Pyramid Game, Card Sharks, and Jeopardy. And you'd be, it would be full, like, 70% of the time you'd get at least 20 kids in there, and everyone's watching Jeopardy or Card Sharks. Card Sharks was always my favorite. And I ended up going down there, and I got a job there. And I talked to the vice principal. His name was Mr. Costante. And he's like, uh, he looked like Ed Harris, a really skin lanky version of Ed Harris. And he'd always be walking around the quad telling his, oh, hey, how's it going, man? Oh, you got your apple and your chicken sandwich. That's great. Hey, do me a favor. Pick up that piece of trash right there, will you? And he'd always be going around making sure, yeah, you don't want to keep the place clean. Make it cleaner, better than, better than what you found, right? So I talked to him, and he was like, all right, we need someone during fifth period. Why don't you go ahead and sit in the chair? If people need to come in to get a detention slip, you give it to them. I was like, so I give the detention slips. Yeah, yeah just give them that. And they'll go back to their class and sign the teacher. OK, all right, great, fantastic. And uh, one of the other guys who was working that same job had set up a little bit of a racketeering game there where we were taking bets on pool games because you'd had to give your ID when you came to get the ball set. So you'd put in bets on that and we'd keep a ledger of it. And we'd take bets on card sharks, Jeopardy, and pyramid game. And there was one day that, uh, it was my senior year, the card sharks game that was on featured a very, very enthusiastic Indian guy named Dilip and he had the best Beatles bowl cut that I ever seen in my life. And the plaid suit with just thick vest, big old tie knot. And his voice was just, yeah, all right, I love it, get it, yeah. And the whole game was you're, you're, you get a set of cards and you're, there, some of them are face down and you have to pick higher or lower. The next one, what's the next one gonna be? Higher or lower than the last one, higher than lower. And the guy, the guy, the host, his name was Jim Perry, he's like, ah, the leap. The leap, you're looking good. You got, you got a seven here. That's, that's, that's a tough one, though. You could go higher, but you're pretty mid-ground there. You could be lower, too. It'd be, oh, that's a good, that's so true, Jim. Oh, God. You know, I think it's going to be higher, higher. And Jim would be like, all right, let's see. Is it higher and it'd be king? Higher, yeah, all right, it's higher, yeah. He was so bad. And the way that the, the bets would work was we'd be watching the game, 
before the game actually started, like the two minute introduction for all the character, all the the contestants, uh, you'd throw up your hand, be like, uh, one, that's my that's my wager. I'm I'm coming on on one. Uh, I'm coming on number two. I'm coming on number three. And we'd all just write this down. And the ledger got to be pretty thick. It was a uh, it was uh, one of those compound notebooks that had like the black and white scribbles on the front of it. And we filled it out pretty well for the first year that I was there. The second year that I was there, that's when we got into some trouble. And it was only a three-year operation, so I guess that says volumes about how organized and hush-hush we were. Uh, so we started doing little jokes and like writing little things in the, in the notebook. And one thing that kept popping up was, uh, you pick up that trash for me, you pick up that trash for me, and we'd quote Costante, and he found the book one day, and he was going through it, and he was just like, ah! And he called Jamie, who was the one who set up the whole game, basically, and Jamie came into the office, and he was just like, what is this? And Jamie's like, um... Nothing, as you do, because what are you going to do? Admit? No. Lie. Sell the lie. And then I get called into his office after that, and I, I cop up to it because I'm, I'm just, I'm sweating bullets the whole time. My heart's just, <laughs> I, I, don't, I don't really know. I, 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 I was just fumbling every single word that was coming out of my mouth. And he's like, okay, here's what's going to happen, Jason. I'm going to let you off, but you're going to be doing a lot of service around the school for the next half year. I was like, shit. So I ended up working in the library for a good three months, sorting out books, putting books back on shelves, checking books in. It was just miserable. And it taught me a great lesson of gambling is not really worth it. That's it. Thank you. <laughs>